guys, welcome to the channel. Thank you for hopping on and checking out what I'm up to today or what we are up to today. So in today's video, we are taking some frames that I absolutely love when I find secondhand frames. A lot of times they have a lot of detail and I love sharing my vision of what you can or how you can make these over and make them into beautiful wall decor for your own home or if you are a flipper like me, to get ready to resell. Though my first one is not quite a frame frame, it is a window with a frame. So, and a very old, neglected, beautiful American flag that I, oh, just stumbled across at a sale. So two of my favorite items. So first off, I need to get this window cleaned up. <laughs> And I wish windows were just that easy of a thing that you just wash and you call it good. But nope, there's always <laughs> some grossness because a lot of times these older wooden windows are just sitting on the ground outside in a barn, a shed, something. So they always really need to get cleaned up. A lot of times when it's nice out, I will start off by power washing them. But sometimes you still have to go in and do a little scrubbing on them because a lot of times the side that I want to show off is the side that is unpainted. The side that is usually painted is the side that was outside the house. So first of all, I'm trying to work. There's a metal piece on the bottom of this that I do not want. So I need to take it off along with the mechanism that is smashed that would latch the window itself. So I'm not gonna be keeping that. Now that I've got the window all cleaned up, I taped off the panes of the glass because I know this wood has a tendency when I go to paint it white, will bleed through my white paint and make an ugly yellow color. So I'm going to have to go in and do a couple coats of shellac. I can't leave this wood natural. It's got I mean, I don't want, I'm not spending the time to sand off that coral color that's somehow on the outside of these. But yes, I need to do a couple coats. This wood is really raw, so the first couple coats will probably soak in, so I might have to do a third coat. My three coats of shellac are dry. I can go in with my Kills Paint and Primer, and I'll have to do a couple coats to get this to completely cover. I have that window frame all distressed and smoothed out the way that I want it. I need to figure out my placement of this very fragile, like I don't want to pull on it too much because it will just rip. So I want to be very gingerly with this beautiful aged flag. I absolutely love the patina, which is probably dirt, but I love the patina. And we're going to be putting it behind glass anyway. So I need to fold the flag over, as you see, it's overlapping the window frame, but I don't want to be able to see the fold. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting a piece of contractor's paper, which is kind of like, you know, paper bag wrapping, um, shipping paper. So that way, when I go to fold it, you won't see the folds on the other side. It's really, really delicate and see-through. So I'm just going to very gingerly just fold this over. I'm not taping it. I'm not gluing it or anything. We would be putting the same backing, that contractor's paper on the back of this to hold it in. So I'm not worried about it moving or anything. But what I'm doing here is I have tacks and I'm overlapping the tacks where I'm not going into the flag itself. I'm just having the tack go on the other side of the wood and then, but that's what's holding the flag in place. So 
And now that I have that all tacked on, I'm going to cut another piece of that paper. As you see, I left an edging of wood, so I folded enough that when I go to put that paper on, I'm just going to be hot gluing the paper to the wood. So it's pretty easy to cut the paper off. All you have to do is take some sandpaper and then press it against that sharp edge of the frame and just push back and forth a couple times with that sandpaper and it will cut it nice and flush. Now I'll add a couple eyelet hooks and then a 17 gauge wire which is weight appropriate for this heavy. You know, old windows are heavy so I want to make sure that I have something that can withstand the weight of the window. So yep, I'm just going to go ahead. I've already got my eyelet holes in place. I like to make sure that my wire is nice and tight, give it a nice twist. And once I get it all on there, I also like to give the wire a good pull. These windows are old, frames are old. The wood may not be as secure as you want it to be. I've had them actually come out when I pulled on it to make sure that my eyelet hook screw is in place and is there and nice and sturdy. So there's definitely something about seeing one of these old frames at a yard sale, at a garage sale, in a barn sale, and people are like, you do you really want that it's a lot worse for wear i don't see anything about this frame that is worse for wear i was so happy with the details i was so happy that it had a piece of wood behind it oh I, it's just absolutely gorgeous so i'm going to start right off with it taking that old hanging system off i never trust those old hanging systems along with any kind of screw anything that's sticking out from the back so i can get this piece of wood out now all they did was fold some nails over basically to hold the the wood in so that's when i'm just pulling them out and you know this one needs a good cleaning because i know that i found it <laughs> on the floor at a barn sale so yes it needs a good cleaning i'm going to be doing that same crackle technique on this frame so yep we're going to undercoat it in black use the school glue and then spray it with white and wait for it to dry and show those wonderfully beautiful crackles So now what I'm going to do to attach the wood back on, and I know that it doesn't completely fit. There's some brokenness. I don't care. I really like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these little twists, hardware pieces that a lot of times you use to keep glass in like a picture frame or a mirror. Um, that way I can make sure that this piece of wood is nice and secure and that it's more flat than a nail sticking out. I'm going to be adding a wreath to this one, so I need to finish off my back first, that way I don't smash my wreath. So I'm going to do that same hot gluing on this contractor's paper to the back of this, and then I will go ahead and put the hardware on also, so I already have the hanging system all ready to go. So just hot glue it on, take that sandpaper after you get it glued on to cut those edges nice and sharp, and then adding some eyelet hooks along with that 17 gauge wire. Now that I have my back all pre prepared, I'm going to be making a wreath. So these are really cost efficient. They're a little bit time consuming, but I think I've got it down to where it really isn't terribly bad. So I make the wreaths out of hymnal, <laughs> old hymnal books. A lot of times these are the free items at a yard sale, grudge sale. They're in, if you don't take these, I'm just going to throw them in the trash. So I'm always happy to pick them up. And I know you could probably photo copy a paper, print them off your printer, but there's something about the age of the outer ed of the paper that just isn't the same as just a piece of copy or paper. That is what gets me. And I have to share with you, this is another one of my best sellers. So I actually buy the forms, these foam forms at the Dollar Tree store 
um, for a dollar and a quarter. Or if I can ever find them thrifting, I definitely snag them up. Depending on what size of wreath I want to make is what I cut. So this is a smaller wreath. It's going to be a smaller frame. So I'm actually cutting the paper in half and then cutting that in half. And that is what I'm going to use. So it's really not like if you had a bigger wreath, you could just leave it as half the sheets. But of course, I want to get the most for my money by making this full. So I found just working with the quarter sheets work perfectly. So all you do is you just fold it in half over a pencil, you scrunch it in like you're gonna throw it in the trash. Really, that's it. <laughs> it's really pretty simple. Um, and then I put some hot glue on it and then I attach it to the foam starting on the outside or the inside, just you need a starting point. And then I hold it there for like five seconds or so and actually the hot glue is hot enough that it just melts that foam just a wee bit and it really gives a good bond. So then I, all I do is just keep working around. that I have my first layer done, I'm going to go ahead and start filling it in. So what I'm doing now is that space in between each one of the pieces of paper, I'm going to stagger my next grouping that along that, this is going to make it look really full. For those who go to auctions, do you ever think, oh my gosh, I really, really want that. I hope nobody, nobody's going to bid on that. And this mirror was one of those. Look at that detail. It is huge though, guys. It is huge. It is super heavy. It has some age on the mirror itself, but I do not care. It is gorgeous. And if you saw my last haul video, you would have known that I said, we are really squirrels pecking up from win winter here. I guess I'm afraid I'm never going to find another product out. So I have to actually stage my pre right here because our shop is so full <laughs> right now from going to all these ha auctions, but I'm loving it. So my space, <laughs> my space is really minimal. <laughs> yeah, I I we're really full up right now. Took the air compressor to this, I washed it off, made sure I could get as much of that area cleaned off as I could. Sometimes when you have all those grooves, it's not the easiest thing. And then I went through with some contact paper and some masking tape to tape off that mirror. I did not want to attempt to try to remove this mirror to paint this frame, but I'm going to go ahead and start painting this, as you see, with the black. This is definitely not one of those mirrors like a furniture piece that I could lift up and move around. So I have it on a roller cart. It is taking up every bit of space, just leaving me a little bit of space to get it painted up in our spray room. But oh, it is just absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm going to be able to bring out all these beautiful details. So I'm actually going to do the crackle effect. And somebody asked if I already went through my bottle of school glue D. Nope, I still have it. Sometimes I do have containers or put it in a bowl like this time where I put it in a bowl. So anyway, I you just put a generous amount. I'm just going to try to work it in a lot of those crevices I can. I really kind of want to work fast because I don't want my glue to dry, but this is a beast of a mirror. So I might have to re-wet some of the areas that I started off with at first, but oh, this is just going to make this mirror just a pop. I do find that that's key. You do not want your glue to be completely dry before adding your paint to make that crackle. You want the glue and the paint drying together. That's what makes those beautiful crackles. This is 
definitely one of those mirrors that you could just rest it on the ground, but it did have a wire that was nice and secure, so I wasn't going to mess with that at all, but I did hang another wire the opposite way, so that gives somebody another options of how to hang it. So thanks for watching today and let me know, have I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand finds in a new way? Give me a quick comment down below which of the items were your favorite. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you've popped on this channel and checked out what we're up to and all about and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!